Hi everyone, I'm Jeje and welcome to Be Colorful. In the last video I made two Christmas lanterns created using the Tony Craft Kit number 36, a wonderful kit that allows us to create gift boxes, but not only, as you have seen. And today I'm gonna give you many ideas on how to use this kit to create cards. In the previous video you will find the link down below in the description area and in the link that appears above on the right you can see the unboxing of this kit. Still in the description box and on my blog you will also find all the materials and tools that I use in the video if you are interested in something in particular. Christmas is coming really really soon, but uh, do the he who cannot be named uh, 19. The best uh, way to give a warm thought uh, is to create handmade cards. So let's start creating uh, our Christmas card right away. For the first card I will use the main die of the kit to die cut the Tom Brown classic card. I will not die cut the whole figure because I will only need the central rectangle. In fact, with my guillotine I'm going to cut out all the parts that I don't need. Now I will die cut the rectangle with this uh, other die from the kit to get a beautiful and intricate Christmas design on it. To quickly remove all the small bit pieces I'm using this tool which consists in a foam pad and a rotating brush with very stiff bristles and also this big tool. So now let's move on to the decoration of this panel. I'm gonna show you one way to apply glitter on your cards, that is using a very strong double-sided tape adhesive, so we avoid that the glitters come off the card. I'm going to apply two strips of double-sided tape following the fold lines created by the die. I chop off the excesses, and I'm gonna add two more strips of strong double-sided tape adhesive, but thinner than the first one. So I take the box, which will prevent too much glitter on my work surface, and put a sheet inside it, so I can put the excess glitter back inside the bottle easily. With the help of a bone folder I'm going to press uh, the glitter on the adhesive. And I clean everything. When I use glitter I have uh, at hand an anti-static cloth like a Swiffer and a small vacuum cleaner to make my life better. Well, This panel can be used for a shake card or a window card, but I'm gonna show you a third option, a slider card. First, I'm gonna glue a piece of acetate sheet to the back of the panel, since it has very delicate part. Then, with the main die, I'm gonna create what will be the moving part of the slider card. In this case, I'll use both the central rectangle and the top flap of the figure. I'm going to cut out the rest. 
In this case, I also shorten the figure on the left and the right side, so that it can slide better inside the pocket. I also cut a piece of uh, the lower part, in this way only a small portion will remain outside the pocket, which will still be fine, extract the paper. So now I'm gonna prepare my card base in standard size, that's 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half on a 300 GSM ivory cardstock. To add some interest to the background, keeping it subtle, we can use an embossing folder. I will use this with the Holy Vine by Gemini. I gonna emboss directly my card base, so I put the upper face inside the embossing folder, leaving the other half outside. Now you should follow the instructions of your die cutting machine on how to use an embossing folder. In my case, I have to use layer number one of the C6 platform. Then I gonna compose the sandwich first acrylic plate, embossing folder with paper inside, and acrylic plate. We can also add a touch of shine with the golden glazier paste, staining the embossed part, just with your finger. Next, I'm going to cover up the mobile part of the slider card with a glitter card panel. And I'm gonna add a little pocket on the back where I can insert a gift card or a voucher. Now I'm going to stick the slider card pocket using some foam tape. The thickness will allow the mobile part to enter and exit easily. Of course, I don't apply the foam tape on the top where I will put the moving part. I'm going to stick the slider card pocket onto the card base and the slider card is ready. I just have to add the sentiment by die cutting the word joy from the kit. I finish the card by creating a red bow in the upper hole of the mobile tag and adding a few drops of this holiday cheer glitter drop not included in the kit. For my second card I will create a banner. I'm gonna use the die of the kit to create the bottom border. To do that I will do a partial die cut, leaving the blade of the long side of this die out of the scissic plate. 
In general, a partial die cutting can be performed leaving outside the plate all the parts that you don't want to cut. In this way. In my case, the long side will not be cut. Getting this. Next, I'm going to cut out the axis, taking the lateral end of the die cut as a reference point. Then I'm gonna decorate the border with one of the matching dies from the kit. For die cutting, I'm gonna use the metal plate from C6. Since the die has a very intricate design, I'd risk not getting a perfect cut if I used the normal C6 plate. I continue to embellish the banner with these two triangular dies of the kit, which by arranging them in this way will take the shape of a very intricate and elegant Christmas tree. Now I quickly prepare my card base on ivory cardstock in standard size that's 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half. I'm gonna shorten the banner slightly by cutting out a piece of the top. And now let's give some color to the card. This banner can easily become a shaker card. I'm going for a window card, so I'm going to choose the background for my intricate window. I go with this beautiful red berries cotton paper from the kit. I'll give the banner some dimension by using foam tape on the back. So I'm gonna stick a piece of red cotton paper. I'm going to decorate my partner even more by gluing a very thin strip of glitter paper. And now let's move on to the sentiment, for which I'm going to die cut Noel on the red cotton paper and create the oval base for the sentiment using the glitter paper. I glue Noel on the base and before gluing everything I'm going to add a touch of shine on the background applying a little bit of glazier paste with a sponge directly on the card base, making horizontal movements. Now I can stick the banner on the card base and the sentiment with two layers of foam pad in the circular cavity of the bottom border. Finally, as uh, final details, I'm gonna add a few drops of uh, gold glitter drop included in the kit, and the card is ready. When I play with my Tony Craft kit, I always make a shaker card. In this case, I'd also like to show you a way to create a super shimmery background with the aqua shimmer pen included in the kit. I go for a watercolor background. Having to apply a consistent amount of water, I will use watercolor paper. So I'm going to spread a first layer of water on the surface. and apply some of this cinnamon stick aquaflow pen by Nuvo. Mm -hmm. 
I make sure to dry the first layer and add a second layer to intensify the color. Next I'm going to apply the last layer with the shimmer pen included in the kit. I'm going to dry and add some splashes here and there. This technique is my favorite when I create my own background. And here is a super sparkling watercolor effect background. If you want, you can add all the details on the background, such as random stamps. I'll use the snowflakes from the kit. I'm going to stamp them with my clear Versamark ink because I go for a hot embossing technique with a gold embossing powder. I clean the stamps and I'm ready to melt the embossing powder with my heat tool. So now I prepare a frame with this iridescent mirror card from the kit. First I make a four and a quarter by five and a half panel. Then, with this uh, stitch rectangle die, I make the frame. So, as with any shaker card, I glue a piece of acetate sheet on the back of the window. Then I apply the foam tape, creating the space that will contain the element of the shaker card, so I'm careful not to leave any open spaces where element could escape. Before assembling everything, I'm gonna create a decorative element for the card that will contain the sentiment. Then I die cut the round tag onto the gold satin paper. To then die cut Joy directly on the tag. I also create another tag on the iridescent red cardstock. I'm going to glue the tag in the middle of the card. In addition to a decorative element, this tag will allow me to glue another piece of foam tape on the back, making the acetate more stable even on the center. Now it's time to fill the shaker card with the element. In particular, I will use this iridescent red confetti that match the color of the frame and this golden sequence that match the color of the snowflakes in the background and in the tag. I'm going to remove the protective film from the foam tape and stick the background of my shaker card. I'm gonna glue the panel onto the card base and I move on to the final details. I'd just like to add a bow on the tag, but I don't really like any of the ribbons I have on my stash. Then I create an iridescent red paper bow with these dies. I finish it off by stick in the center of the bow a small oval golden gem.
Finally, I am going to glue the bow on the tag. And the shaker card is finished. One way to use glacier paste is uh, to apply it with the stencil technique. In particular, for this card, I show you how these uh, texture pastes are wonderful on a black background. I'm going to use this stencil by Tim Holtz with uh, Pine Tree. First, I make a banner out of black cardstock. Then I fix the stencil with low stick tape adhesive. And I proceed to spread the glazier paste with a spatula. I let it dry and I extend the design to make sure I have a long enough banner. This time I also cover up one of the three. And voila! I let it dry again and then I gonna add the missing tree, spreading with the spatula the glitter accent from the kit, giving this tree pattern a small and elegant detail. I continue to create the background panel on a classic ivory cardstock which will completely cover up the card base which will be a standard for an quarter by five and a half card. I chop off the banner slightly, both on the left and the right side. That's about the length, so I have a five and a half inch long panel. I'm gonna add some finishing border by cutting out two strips of gold satin paper from the kit. I chop off the excesses and I'm going to glue the banner onto the card base with some foam tape to give a nice dimension to the card. As a sentiment, I'm going to use the set of the kit stamping Merry Christmas on black cardstock with my Versamark ink. And then I go for a hot embossing technique with the gold embossing powder. I 
I cut out the sentiment by creating a strip of paper, to which I'm going to add finishing edges with the gold satin paper. I'm going to glue the sentiment onto the card with foam pad. I just have to stick everything on the card base and the card is done. For the last card in this video I will create a slightly more rustic card using the tan brown classic card from the kit, combining it with gold and white. After making the background panel I'm going to cut out another smaller panel again on the same cardstock. And two more panels of gold satin paper, which will create finishing borders for the previous two panels. So I will have in total four panels. I'm going to prepare my card base, this time a landscape, always in standard size, that's four and a quarter by five and a half. Let's move on to decorate the card. First I will create a background of snowflakes on the larger tan brown panel, randomly stamping the two stamps of the kit with my clear Versamark ink because I will do a hot embossing technique with a white powder. I'm going to fill the gaps with the smaller snowflake. After that I'm gonna add a few white splashes, diluting a little white acrylic gesso with water. I spray some of it even in the smallest panel. Once the backgrounds uh, are finished, let's move on to creating the focal point, for which I decided to create a triangular Christmas tree with the two intricate dies of the kit. Now I try to decide which sentiment I'm gonna use. I could use the ones from the kit, but I'd like a slightly larger stamp, so I'm going to use this one from Tonic Craft Kit number 11. Wow, two years ago, basically. So I'm going to stamp it with a clear Versamark ink. And then I'm going to emboss it with the white embossing powder again. I'm ready to assemble the card, gluing all the panels one on top of the other. And on the card base. For the smallest panel I'm going to use some foam tape to give a nice dimension. I'm going to stick my focal point with some liquid adhesive. I finish my card by adding some glitter drop to the center of the snowflakes. 
as well as close to the sentiment. And the card is finished. And this was the last card for today. I hope you enjoyed and got inspired. I give you an appointment to the next part where we will create together other five cards. Thanks for watching, bye bye and be colorful!